Hey, it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another video edition of Widower Wednesday. I'm Abel Kia, author of the book Dating a Widower, and today we're going to discuss keeping the late wife's memory alive and why that is such a bad, awful thing for relationships. Um, and I gotta admit, I am in a little bit of a mood today. Um, I got an email, and the email wasn't necessarily the source of my mood, but through some coaching sessions um, and some stuff on the Dating the Widower Facebook group, um, which all revolve around the widowers trying to keep the, the memory of their late wife alive um, in the wrong way, I might add, has just kind of put me in a little mood. So I'm not feeling very charitable uh, towards those that think that keeping that they need to keep the memory of the late wife alive at the expense of their relationship so let me start on this email that kind of uh that i got this morning and then i'm gonna share an article that goes into a reason why you don't do this and i will post the article by the way that i'm going to share in a uh, link in the description below but the uh, but the email i got i share in part it says abel i'm a recent widower i feel i will always want to keep my wife's memory alive moving forward regardless of my relationship status you seem to believe this is harmful to a relationship can you explain why this is and yes, I am happy to explain why this is, because holding on to the past is not only harmful to a relationship, it usually destroys a relationship. Um, and all the years I've done these dating guides and coaching, um, I still have yet to see a happy marriage where the widow or widower tried to keep the memory of their late spouse alive and, the, and it strengthened the uh, relationship. And so a question I will always ask widows and widowers um, who are, you know, want to hold on to the memory of the late wife, I always ask, well, how does doing this strengthen your current relationship? And in all the years I've been doing this, I have yet to get an answer where they can tell me how it strengthens the, the uh, relationship. Because it doesn't. Let me give you an example. And this is a creepy example. Not example. Not all examples are this creepy. I'll have some other examples. But let me give you a well, what we'll call a, a creepy example of the husband trying to keep the memory of his first wife alive. And this comes from um, an article that was um, from a news station in Australia. And again, I will post the link to this in the description of this of of this YouTube video. So if you want to watch, if you want to read the article in its entirety, you can do that. Um, I'm going to read parts of the article and comment on them and then talk about some other situations as well so might get a little bit kind of going today so just be prepared for that okay here goes the article um, it says um, a man has come under fire for admitting that he asked his new spouse to wear the same perfume as his late wife to help quote keep her memory alive he says his new wife wore the scent for years without knowing that it was the late wife's perfume until recently when a family member told her the truth. And the widower says here, he goes, I try to keep her memory alive with little things that remind me of her. And one of the things I've done since she passed was always keeping some of her brand of perfume around so I could keep her scent, her, um, her scent present. I'm sure it's kind of creepy, but it's not uncommon among other widowers I know. Okay, let's, <laughs> I'm going to stop right here. Um let's just talk about the smell is a very powerful memory trigger and so you know i i i get the fact that maybe you like a you know you want a perfume but holy what the hell were you thinking asking your now wife your alive wife the woman that loves you and here is alive now to wear your late wife's perfume holy cow i mean i know i wasn't perfect dating julie and we had issues but there was no way i was ever going to ask her to wear christmas perfume in fact if you ask julie she doesn't even know what christmas perfume is because she doesn't need to know that kind of stuff um and julie has her own perfume and i love it and it's great but why on earth i mean honestly explain this to me why on god's green earth would you ask your whether it's your girlfriend your wife or whatever to wear the 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 a perfume of your deceased spouse whoa no no that is i mean that's that's awful i mean oh my gosh that's uh, that's awful okay but here wait let's he's he's, he's going to try to uh, justify this here and he says at some point i i'm going back to the article he says at some point i bought it for my current wife as a gift and asked her to wear it i didn't tell her when i gave it to her that it was the same type my first wife wore but my first wife's friends and family noticed and, and i asked them not to say anything well, if you're asking people not to say anything about it, isn't that maybe a sign that you shouldn't be doing it? I mean, if you're trying to keep, you know, if this is like a good thing, I, I, again, I'm going to go back. How does giving your new girlfriend or wife or whatever the perfume of your late wife to wear strengthen your relationship? I think if it would strengthen the relationship, you would be more than happy not only to have other people tell her, but to you tell her herself. 
I mean, tell her yourself that, yeah, by the way, I like this perfume. And yeah, my uh, late wife wore it. Will you please wear it so I can keep the memory of my late wife alive? Jeez, my heck. And so um, he told them not to say anything. He goes, they didn't. So I guess they didn't. I guess they finally told her, but they told me they felt this wasn't healthy. Or, oh, I'm sorry, they didn't say anything, but they told me that they felt this wasn't healthy. Well, yeah, it's not healthy. And by the way, if you know a widow or widower that's acting like this, no, 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 you don't keep this thing a secret. This is not a secret that you keep. Um, this is something that you have to, I'm sorry, there are, I, I understand there's some things you don't tell people, but this is not one of them. This is, this is, this is not good. Um, despite, and so anyway, going on, uh, despite the family's objection, the husband continued to justify his actions. I disagreed because I wasn't forcing her to wear it. And, and it was only, it was the only thing like this I did. Well, yeah, you know what? You weren't forcing her to wear it, but you didn't actually tell her why she, why you bought it in the first place. Oh, I mean, I wonder what her, her, I wonder if she would have worn it, voluntarily worn it, if you had told her about it. Now, if she had, okay, that's fine, but holy cow. And he goes like, and it's the only thing like this I did. I never asked her to change hairstyles, hair colors, or the way she dressed. So it's not like I was trying to recreate my first wife. I'm rolling my eyes for those who are listening and not actually watching this video. Um, yeah, you know what? You were trying to recreate the first wife with this perfume. I'm sorry, but this doesn't pass the smell test, pun intended. Um, um, he goes, it wouldn't have worked even if I wanted to because that's because they don't look alike, which I think proves that I'm doing isn't unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not. Uh, that's a perfectly normal thing to do to ask your uh, your new wife to wear the perfume of the old wife. That's completely healthy. I can't think of a reason why that would be unhealthy. I mean, you know, come on. Um, the husband said he managed to keep the secret from his wife for 10 years before she learned the truth. And by the way, shame on the family for keeping that a secret for 10 years. Um, he goes, we've now been married for over a decade, and my former sister-in-law finally told my wife about the, fur about the perfume. She thinks I need to move on and stop living so much in the past and believes that my first wife wouldn't want me hiding something like this from my wife or holding on to her in some, some of the ways I am. Hey, your sister-in-law is exactly right, by the way, or your former sister-in-law is exactly wife. You are living too much in the past, and um, you shouldn't be holding stuff like that back from your, from your uh, now wife. But you know what? It says here, quote, I don't get her concern. She acts like I'm a crazy person, but this is the only thing like this I've done ever. Guess what? It's not the only thing he's ever liked this. I guarantee if we were to dig in farther, there's probably more things he's probably doing to hold on to the past. But hey, you know, you got to keep the memory of that late wife alive there because if you can't smell her perfume, you're probably going to forget all about her and those great years you had together. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm upset today. So um, not surprisingly, his confession has created bigger problems in the marriage. My wife was upset that I never told her about the perfume being my first wife's favorite and has caused some other issues, he admitted. For one, she now wonders if some of the times I was really attracted to her, was it her or just the perfume and me imagining my late wife? I've tried reassuring her, but she won't listen to what I say. Gee, I wonder why she won't listen. And yeah, you know what? Her concern of wondering like if you were really attracted to her or just maybe you know, imagining the late wife, completely 100% justified and valid. 100%. Holy cow. And yeah, I bet she won't listen to what you have to say because you've been lying to her for 10 years. Don't do that. Um, he, can, he, he concludes, I don't think what I have done is that bad. I didn't tell her, but I never forced her to wear it and I haven't tried to change her. Good freaking heck. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> sorry, but this doesn't, this, I mean, so again, I'm going to go back to that question, you know, to that widower, the recent widower who wants to keep the memory of his late wife alive. Well, Again, explain to me how that strengthens your relationship. Here, let me give you another example. Imagine recently marrying a widower. So you're a newlywed. You've been married, say, less than a year. Again, whatever. Imagine being a newlywed to your widower and waking up and looking at Facebook and seeing that he posted how much he loves and misses his late wife on the late wife's birthday because you know he has to keep that memory alive. Can you imagine the devastation that you would feel if you were the wife of this guy and uh, and 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 he happened to post, um, you know, again, it's her, it's his late wife's birthday, but he posts on Facebook how much he misses her. Because again, you know, you got to keep the memory. Uh, how does that strengthen your marriage? Oh my gosh, I can't. I I mean, I mean, I know it again. I you know, you can read room for two. I was in no way perfect about the way I handled my relationship with Julie, but you know, in my defense. Um, I never did anything that bad. I at least tried to move on. I learned from my mistakes, and I sure as heck wasn't doing anything, especially after we were married, that talked about how much I missed Krista. Holy cow. 
Wow. Or imagine this. Okay, again, because you know you got to keep the memory alive. Uh, imagine being in a relationship with a widower, again, married, not married, or whatever. But every time you go to the widower's house, you have to see the late wife's clothes in the closet or photos on the wall because, you know, again, the widower has to keep the memory alive because if those photos and clothes were gone, it would be like she didn't exist and people would just forget her, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about. So again, how does that strengthen the relationship? You know, or imagine being in a relationship where you're constantly bombarded with stories and memories about the late wife because, you know, you don't want to forget what a cool person she was. How does that strengthen the relationship? I mean, come on, guys. Everybody has a past, and I get it. And I know people are sitting here thinking, well, you know, I have a past, and people have to accept the past. Okay, I get it. Yeah, everybody has a past, but there's a difference between understanding and saying, yep, that person was married before, and his spouse, his, you know, and his wife died. And, ex and making that spouse part of your marriage. I mean, you know, when you build, you know, when you build a, a, new, a new relationship, you want to build it on a clean foundation. You don't go to a cemetery, you don't build a house in a cemetery, so why on earth would you want to build a relationship atop a tomb of your dead wife? It doesn't work. That's a crappy foundation and it's gonna ruin the relationship. Again, anytime you want to keep the memory of the late wife alive, this is what you gotta ask yourself, is, is how does doing this um, how does doing this action or this thing that I want to do strengthen my current relationship? You know what? If it doesn't, if you can't think of a way that it strengthens your current relationship, you shouldn't be doing it, period. This isn't rocket science, people. It's about, you know, it's about opening your heart and making room for that person because you want to start a new chapter in your life. It's because, and again, no one's asking you to forget about the, you know, to, to forget about the past. I know people are saying, well, how do you keep the late wife's memory alive? Well, it's pretty easy. You put those memories, you put those great times, you put those feelings for your late wife in a special place in your heart. And you can go to that special place once in a while when you need to, but going there, it's a private affair and it doesn't interfere with your current relationship. 99.7% .7 of your heart, thoughts, and actions are focused on the new spouse and your life together and not on the past. That's how you do it. It's not complicated. This isn't some kind of great big secret you know, that you need to unfurl. It's like you can still have those loving feelings for your late wife and those great memories. And you know what? And you can go to that place once in a while. I mean, I... You know, I have a place for Krista in my heart, and every once in a while, I might go there. Uh, but it's not very often, and, and honestly, when I go there, I guarantee nobody knows that I've gone there. Nobody knows I've spent 30 seconds thinking about something, and then, you know, no, nobody knows it because that's just a little private thing I do. And I guarantee if you think that you've got to post on Facebook or have your wife wear the late wife's perfume or something to keep your memory alive, uh, that... No, 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 no. That's not how it works. It destroys relationships every time it's tried. So if you want to keep your late wife's mem memory alive through Facebook or perfume or or whatever, that's fine. But don't be getting in a really get, understand that you're not in a that you shouldn't be getting in a serious relationship. Understand that you're not dating for the right reasons. And then I guess just be upfront with the woman you're dating because you know what there's probably somebody out there that's cool having some kind of creepy threesome with a dead woman. I'm sure, you know, there's 7 billion people on this earth. So I'm sure there's a few people out there, you know, that you know that that are fine with it. But don't destroy your current relationship because you want to keep um, a memory alive because you know what memory shouldn't destroy Memory shouldn't supersede the present and the future. You know, you have a great chance to make new memories, fresh memories, wonderful new things, and just have a new fresh chapter with someone. I mean, I mean, there's so many people in this world that can't even find love once. And if you've been blessed to find love twice and you're going to throw that second opportunity away, what on earth is wrong with you? You're not ready to open your heart. You're not ready to date. And that's fine, but get to a point where you're ready to put your heart in the right spot and open it up to somebody else before you get into a current relationship. Okay, there. Have I vented enough? <laughs> I hope so. So again, back to the back to the 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 earlier question that email. Yes, keeping the late wise memory alive is harmful to the relationship 99.9% .9 of the time that it's tried. You want to keep your late wise memory alive, put a special place in your heart, but freeze, please, please don't make this some kind of public display or do all this creepy stuff that destroys your relationship. If it if it's not strengthening your relationship, guess what? It's harming it and you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. 
I'm Abel Keo, author of the book Dating a Widower. Go ahead and like or comment or do whatever you want with this post. Share it. Share it with share it with your ex widower who's not moving on. Yeah. <laughs> and let me be the bad guy. How about that? Anyway, um, I will, I'll be back next Wednesday. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you can get the, the uh, latest updates as well. And I'll see you then.